Hi, and welcome back for your daily dose of LOLE Sports content, where we're going to cover the LCK games that took place earlier today and then preview tomorrow's pair of series over in Korea as well. Predictions, I went 2-0. I uh, had both as 2 O's, and that's what occurred, so we're now back above 500, and I am so happy about that. Now, first things first, we have Breon and D-plus Kia. D-plus Kia were eighth in my power rankings. This series was a classic bro DK series. The teams play slow. Sometimes Breon sneak out wins, not only single games, but best out of three. So don't be surprised if later on in spring or in summer, Bro end up beating DK because that just seems to happen. Um, so game one, more active than I thought it would be. So uh, D plus get a 2v2 kill off the rip. Um, unfortunately, in game one, uh, Kellen ended up with the first three kills for, uh, DK, and, um, that was unfortunate because you want your damn, your, uh, gold on aiming. In the end, aiming ends up being MVP. Um, bro would take grubs, D plus take Drake to offset that. Bro would go bot lane to try and affect things. Bro would take grubs, D plus take Drake again as a, as a, a handshake. D plus would then swap bot lane to topside and i normally don't mention this but clearly they had a mission so they do this to secure topside they went topside to get another kill onto dk's bot lane uh bro would win a fight 1-0 uh this was a, around rift herald and then there was a fight one for one in the topside um before laning phase would end at 16:15. d plus up only 500 gold um, they did make more plays, 5-4 to four in the laning phase. In terms of CS diff, um, Breon, Karras was ahead 17 CS over Showmaker in game 1. However, D plus Kia's bot lane were ahead 28 combined. And that was a big portion of what happened this series. Uh, Aiming and Kellen as that 2v2 duo really imposed their will on Bro. I believe Bro went Ezreal in both games, which was interesting. Um, now D plus in the end in, in the, I forget which Drake it was in the mid game, um, aiming gets a Penta. Actually he had a delayed Penta and then a Penta in the next fight, um, on Zaya. He dealt a ton of damage. We see that in the results. I mean, he went 15, one and eight with 35% of the team's damage. Um, you know, Gideon tried to make plays at times. But really, he couldn't, like the thing is, like Luce, so, so Gideon hasn't played a lot. Lucid is a rookie. Um, so this was a very inexperienced um, matchup, to say the least. And, you know, both considered aggressive junglers. I didn't feel that. But then again, like I just said, it was a little more aggressive than expected, uh, just because it is a Breon uh, series. Um and, you know, Lucid's game one was better than game two. We definitely saw some some um, misplays by him trying to go in when he probably shouldn't. Um, now, in game two, uh, Breon actually were ahead in the early game in gold at the end of this laning phase. So, Bro would take grubs. Um, D-plus would take Drake and then go mid right afterwards. So, it was almost like three plays at once. Bro would offset that by going mid. And then uh, Gideon and Bro would outplay a bot dive 2-1. to one. Gideon with both kills on the Sejuani, which is kind of unfortunate. Bro would then win a Drake fight 3-2. to two. Uh, Karis getting a double on Azir. And then D-plus would steal a Rift Herald, which was a big deal in my opinion. Um, Kingen actually using his poppy and getting rid of both um, Gideon and Morgan. I don't remember if it was Morgan or Karis helping him. Regardless, cleared them out with the poppy hammer, takes the Rift Herald. Kingen ended up 2 one He had a good series um, staying alive. At the end of the slaining phase at 17-15, Bro still had a 1K lead. Um, and they had a, a major gap in the top lane. Morgan was ahead 31 CS, which is pretty damn huge. Um, but D plus Kia's bot lane ahead 18 again. And that was the, the nature of this. You know, people, you know, we kept hearing in the, um, 
I mean, sorry, I mean, you might not have watched it, but kept hearing the caster say, you know, Envy's supposed to be aggressive, and, and this is why they brought him in, and it's like, this is a downgrade for Bro. Um, Envy ended up going 4, 7, 3, 34% of damage. Uh, effort getting caught out at times. Karis did try very hard. Um, you know, there were moments where I thought he stood out. Like I said, that one team fight around Drake, he looked very good. But Aiming was able to outplay him with like no HP to solo kill him, which helped Aiming. Aiming ends up being MVP, mostly in part due to that Penta in Game 1. And one could argue maybe Kingen was MVP in Game 2 for knocking um, Gideon away from the Rift Herald, securing that objective, not allowing Bro to maybe go up to 3k gold. Uh, before 20 minutes and who knows what would happen if they actually had that lead into the mid game um, you know I, I thought showmaker in game two looked good uh, finding ways on the silas to to impact things um, kind of all I could really say about him uh, Nick, on his Nico he did find pop blossoms I will say that but at the same time aiming was just aiming was dealing so much damage in these team fights it was really hard to ignore that being a big difference. Second series, uh, we have <clears throat> Fear X and KT. KT would win 2-0. They were 12th in my power rankings. Um, so, Barrel ends up being MVP. We're going to get this out of the way. His way, he so Barrel, of course, is the guy to pull out way in pro play. He puts it at support. You see in solo queue, it has like a sub 40% win rate or whatever off release. I, nobody can figure it out. But leave it up to Barrel to figure it out and deal 567 DPM going 10, 4, and 27 in the bot lane. Normally, I don't want to rattle off stats right away with the new way I'm doing this, but when your support goes 10, 4, 27, has some serious long-range poke, it's wild. So, game one, uh, there's a trade in the bot 2v2, one for one, and that was the story of it as well. Deft and Barrel got after the bot lane of Fox. So, uh, Fox would go mid, then the teams would trade Grubs for Drake, KT going Grubs, Fox going Drake, KT would go top. There's a one for one in the 2v2 again, KT go top again. Uh, excuse me, KT would take Grubs, Fox would take Drake, Fox would go mid again. So, laning phase was four to four. Uh, KT were ahead 700 gold at 1330, so a little quicker games uh, game than we saw in the Bro D Plus series. In terms of CS diff, the only significant one that was even over 4 CS diff at the time of laning phase ended was KT's bot lane ahead 36 CS. That's, that's a diffy in the bot lane. That is a serious, serious diffy. Um, and in part, mostly because of barrel. Um, Death did find moments, but that way, I mean, that pick was massive. Fear X really had no answer. Jong Hoon looked um, out of place in this one. He was trying to make things happen on the Bard, and it really didn't work. And, you know, as I just rattled off how these teams approached the early game, you notice KT went top twice. Now, game two, Perfect actually played very well on the Quesante into Udyr. Um, but game one, KT clearly were like, hey, we're going to help out Perfect. We're going to try and get the top side of the rift. We want grubs. We do not care about Drake. Um, and in the end, that bodes well for them because these games weren't super long. Um, game two, we saw Way once again. Uh, Fear X would go bot lane off the rip. KT would take a Drake. They would get a pick. Uh, then KT would get a 2-0 in the 2v2, which is a big deal. Um, it was Callista Way into Draven Renata. I think game one was Ezreal way, and the second game was Callista way. Nevertheless, 2v2, uh, 2-0 for KT, which, hence, barrel MVP. Fox would take Grubs to offset that. They would go bot side and get two kills as well, take a Drake off of that. KT would win a fight 3-0 in mid lane. Um, perfect getting a double on Sante. He played that team fight very well. There'd be a trade two for two in the jungle. And then Fear X would take Rift Herald about when landing phase ended at 15-15. In terms of plays, Fox actually made five plays to KT's four. Um, and in terms of CS diffs, we saw 
uh, closer ahead 10 over BDD. And that was because of a uh, play, like I said, where KT got a pick in the early game shortly after taking break. That was because uh, BDD went on the Talia and went to bot side and affected things. And I always say about how if you have a, a Talia, a Rise, TF, Galio, champions like that that are going to leave mid lane, that's their value, is their globals, you got to get something off. You got to get something off that's your advantage. It's an extra TP into a fight. You need to get a pick. You need to get a kill, secure an objective. And that's what BDD did. He is one of the best players in the world at being a facilitator. Um, and then the bot lane was at 27 CS again. So uh, Hena, Zhanghun, aka Execute Now, looked out of place. They did not look up to snuff against Deft and Barrel. They probably weren't expecting the way pick at all. Um, and it just... It wasn't great. Now, Closer um, closer looked good. He ends up going 4, 5, and 7, 27% of damage. Deft, by the way, 10, 4, and 14, 29% of damage. So the bot lane of KT went 20, kills, 8 deaths, 41 assists in two games. Game 2, I think they had 29 kills. Um, KT really running up the score in that one. Um, just a dominant performance. And it's not a surprise. Like, I'm not trying to you know, rub it in that I got a 2-0 and thought both were 2-0. I think just looking at these two series, Breon do not have the players to match DK, and Firax do not have the players to match KT, just in every role. You look at it and you say, who is the player in on this team, on Firax, that's going to rival KT? Nobody. Clear did not look very good in game two. Perfect had his number. Perfect actually ended up solo killing uh, Closer even in the side lane later on after uh, Clear couldn't couldn't keep up. Um, Willer had some moments where I thought he, he found opportunities, but Pioshik was dealing a ton of damage in this series as Xin Zhao was scary good in Game 2. Stole an objective in Game 1 on the Lee Sin from Willer. So it, just, it wasn't, it was just a mismatch outright um, on paper, and it was a mismatch on the Rift. Sneak peek for tomorrow, we have HLE DRX, HLE 4th in the power rankings, DRX already have played a series, losing to Nongshim. Uh, last time these two teams played was in summer, HLE would win 3-0 in the playoffs, only 3 of the 10 players remain from the starting 10 of that series. Rascal for DRX, and then um, Zeka and Viper for HLE. Viper led HLE in damage, going 24-8 and 39, 32% in the win. Um, that series is definitely a series. Um, T1 and KDF, both in my top 25. T1 first, KDF 17th. Uh, T1 lost to Gen G uh, yesterday. Last time they played in summer, T1 would win 2-0. Everybody but Jungle for KDF are going to be the same. KDF have went from Young J to Cuz. Um, Zeus led T1 in damage in that one, going 8 to 12, 31% in top lane. Dudu, 261, 21% of damage in the loss for KDF. That is another series. This one's closer than, than that one, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube supporter, and hope to see you again tomorrow.